Hi, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Golson, a kindergarten teacher at George Mason Elementary School. I know you are missing school as much as I am, but I am so excited to be able to be here today and be your reading teacher. Reading is my favorite subject. What's yours? Today, we're going to be reading a book and I'm going to show you a lot of fun activities that you can do at home while we're not at school. Let me share my screen with you so that I can show you the book that we're going to be reading. Give me just a minute. All right, you should be able to see my screen. There's the book. Ooh. The title of this book or the name of the book is Animals in Camouflage. And the author is Phyllis Tildes. Hmm. Do you think that this book is going to be fiction or nonfiction? Remember, fiction books are written to tell us a story, and nonfiction books are written to give us information. Do you think Animals in Camouflage is written to tell us a story or give us information about something? I think so too. I think this is written to give us information. But what is it giving us information about? Let me ask you this. What is a topic? Does anybody remember what a topic is? I know that your kindergarten teachers have been teaching you this all school year, so I'm sure this is just a refresher for you. Let me remind you. A topic is what a book is mostly written about. What do you think the topic of animals in camouflage is? Hmm. There are lots of ways that we can figure it out, right? First, you can be a detective. You can look for clues. We can look for clues in the text and we can look for clues in the pictures. But you have to be able to look close and pay attention. Do you think you're up for the task? Our I can statement today is I can identify the topic of a nonfiction book and make predictions as I read by looking for clues in the pictures and the text. In this book, there are going to be lots of clues in the pictures, so I need you to pay special attention. By paying attention, we can figure out what the author is trying to give us information about. Once we figure that out, we'll know the topic. First, let's talk about that big C word, camouflage. Camouflage. Have you ever heard of camouflage? I talked to some of my boys and girls back at George Mason, and they gave me a couple things that they already knew about camouflage. We're going to go ahead and fill out this KWL chart so that we can so that we can talk more about camouflage in the book, and it makes a little bit more sense. KWL stands for what we know, what we want to know, and what we learned after we read. What do we know about camouflage? Let me give you some answers that my boys and girls gave me. One little boy said, some people wear camouflage when they go hunting. That camouflage looks like this. Mr. Golson goes hunting quite a bit, so he has a lot of camouflage. Another little girl said, soldiers in the army or in the Marines or other parts of the armed forces wear camouflage. One really smart little girl told me that camouflage helps animals hide when they are afraid. That was awesome. All really good answers, right? But that doesn't answer all of our questions. What are you wondering about in the book? I know you have questions. Some things that we were wondering are, why do animals have to camouflage themselves? Which animals can camouflage? And what do animals that camouflage themselves all have in common? How are they the same? How are they different? We're going to read to find out and see if we can answer our questions. Before we read the book, I, wanna, I want to go over some words that you might not be familiar with, just like camouflage. Again, camouflage is a color or shape that protects an animal by, by making the animal difficult to see in the area around it. Can you see a tiger in that picture? 
I can. But he's camouflaged. Those reeds may kind of blend in with his stripes, don't they? So he's a little bit hard to see. You have to definitely look closely and be a story detective to see that. Our next word is disguise. Disguise means to change the way that you look. Have you guys ever dressed up in a costume? That can be a disguise. We change the way we look. Do you see an animal in that picture? I think I see a lizard. He's disguised. Our next one is prey. Prey is an animal that is hunted for food. Usually prey is small, um, but not always. Any animal that can be eaten by a predator is considered prey. Disappear. Some of you might know that word. Disappear means when something that was seen goes poof and can't be seen anymore. So we might be able to see that bird, but then when they tuck their head on those pebbles, we can't see them anymore. They disappear. Are you ready to read our book? I am. Now that we know our vocabulary, we're definitely ready. This book is Animals in Camouflage. Remember, we're going to be story detectives. Our I can statement is that we can identify the topic by using our pictures, right? So we already identified that this book was going to be about camouflage. Hmm. We're going to make sure that we can make predictions as we read as well by using clues from the pictures. Are you ready to be a story detective? All right, I'm going to see how good you are. I blend with the snow as I roam the ice flows of the Arctic in search of fat seals. I have big, furry, a big, furry body and a large, powerful paw. What am I? Do you see any clues in the picture, boys and girls? Look close. We're going to make a prediction. Now, I want you to use sentences like a story detective. I predict that the animal is going to be, hmm. Well, we know it has to be an animal that lives in the cold, right? Because in the picture, it's snowing. Hmm. What do you think it's going to be? In the text, it says they have large, powerful paws and a big, furry body. Do you have a guess? What am I? A polar bear. I can eat 100 pounds in one meal. When my cubs are old enough to leave the den, I teach them to hunt. Raise your hand if you guessed right and it was a polar bear. Good job, story detectives. Who's ready for the next one? My large leathery wings look like the bright green leaves that I love to eat. I can even tremble like a leaf in the breeze. What am I? Hmm. If you don't have binoculars at home, story detectives, you can make your own by going like this. Can you show me your story detective binoculars? I have my real ones here, and I'm going to look for clues in the pictures so that I can make a prediction. Hmm. So it has to be something that blends in with bright green leaves. Hmm. Make sure you're making a prediction. I predict the animal is going to be, what am I? A leaf insect. I am also called the walking leaf. Like my cousin, the walking stick, I am disguised there's a vocabulary word, as a plant to hide from birds, snakes, and other predators. He's hiding. That's why he's camouflaged. Raise your hand if you guessed that it was a leaf insect. Good job, story detectives. Get your binoculars ready for the next animal. 
I rest by day, hidden high in the shady branches of a tree. At night, I take flight. With my wings spread wide, I silently swoop to scoop up my prey. Another book. Do you have your story detective binoculars ready? Let me see them. Hmm. I'm looking for clues in the picture. Do you have any idea what animal it could be? I predict that the animal is going to be, let's see, what am I? A great horned owl. I am also known as the hoot owl. My call is an echoing hoo, 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 hoo. I am a fierce hunter, catching rabbits, mice, and snakes to feed my hungry owlet. Oh, owlets must be baby owls. Raise your hand if you got that, if your prediction was correct. Good job, story detectives. I knew I could count on you. You guys are good at this. Do you have your binoculars ready for the next one? Let me see them. I wait on the petals of a flower ready to pounce on beetles, bees, and flies. My body is shaped like a crab, and I can walk sideways and backwards. Hmm, what am I? I see a bumblebee and a butterfly and a ladybug, but I don't think that's what we're looking for. We're looking for an animal that is camouflaged with a body shaped like a crab. Hmm, let me see your binoculars, boys and girls. Do you see any clues that might help us figure it out? You do? Let's see if your prediction is correct. A crab spider. And like most spiders, I do not spin a web. I can slowly change my color to match the yellow or white flowers on which I can be found. Whoa, look at that crab spider. Man, I've never seen one of those before, have you? I kind of don't want to, he looks a little creepy. Are you ready for the next one? I look like a little dragon hiding in gently waving seaweed. My long snout is like a vacuum hose sucking in tiny creatures. What am I? Remember, we're being story detectives. We're using clues from the picture to make a prediction. Hmm. Do you see any clues, boys and girls? I predict the animal is going to be, did you make your prediction? Let's see if you're right. A leafy sea dragon. I am a fish related to the seahorse. I live in the coastal waters of Southern Australia. My leafy arms often fool big hungry fish. Hmm. It sounds like he has a reason to camouflage, doesn't it? I want you to think about what that reason might be. We're going to come back to that. All right, let's go to the next one. I hide in a thicket, blending with the sunlight and shadows on the forest floor. So is this animal going to be up high or down low? Right, down low. I have camouflage spots that will disappear when I'm older. That was two vocabulary words in one sentence. I have camouflage spots that will disappear when I am older. What am I? Hmm. All right, story detectives, let me see your binoculars. Do you see any clues? I think I know this one. Let's see if I'm right. I predict the animal is going to be maybe a deer. Let's see. A fawn. Fawns. A fawn is another name for a baby deer. I am a baby white tailed deer. My mother is called a doe. My father is a buck and has large antlers for fighting other male deer. I wonder why a baby fawn might need to camouflage. Hmm, I want you to think about that. Next animal. It is easy being green because I blend with the leaves around me. I can even change to yellow or brown. 
From high in a moonlit tree or across a sparkling pond, I sing my spring song. What am I? Hmm. You know what, story detectives? Not only do I see clues in the picture, but I think I see clues underneath the text. Let's see, we know that we're looking for something green in the picture, but what's that under the text or the words? Is that a lily pad? Hmm, let's use our pictures to make a good prediction. I predict this animal is going to be, what was that? I think you're right. I think this animal is going to be a frog. <gasps> a tree frog! Give yourselves a pat on the back. That was a great prediction. I have round suction cups at the ends of my fingers and toes to help me climb. To attract a female mate, I puff out my sack under my chin and croak for hours. I wonder why a tree frog might need to camouflage. Think about it, story detectives. All right, now that's the end of our book. So we're gonna go back to this. You guys did a great job reading our story. I'm super proud of you. Now, why do you think that the author believes the topic of this book is important. Remember, the topic is what the story is mostly about. Do you think the topic of the book is tree frogs or polar bears? No. What was the topic of the book? Right, it was about animals that can camouflage or hide. Why do you think that we need to know about that? Or why do you think that animals need to camouflage? Let's review the ones we, we read about. We read about the polar bear. We read about crab spiders. We read about leafy sea dragons. We read about fawns. We read about tree frogs. We read about the great horned owl. And we read about a leaf insect. It's a lot of animals that can camouflage, huh? Why do you think these animals need to camouflage? Why did the crab spider and the fawn and the tree frog and the leaf insect have to hide? Yeah, they didn't want to be eaten, right? They are prey. So they have to hide and make sure that nobody eats them, right? Let me ask you this. Why would the polar bear or the great horned owl need to camouflage? Are they going to be eaten? No, they're not usually prey. They're usually the predators. So how does hiding help them? Yeah, it's much easier to sneak up on somebody and, and grab them for dinner if you are camouflaged, right? It sounds like animals have a lot of different reasons that they need to camouflage. Maybe that's why the author wrote about such an important topic. Remember, our I can statement is that I, I want you to say it with me. I can identify the topic of a nonfiction book and make predictions as I read by looking for clues in the pictures and the text. Great job, guys. So after you guys are done watching this video, I have tons of fun things that you can do while you're at home. I know you have to be getting bored. These are some activities that you don't have to do, but they're definitely fun. So if you have the time, I really recommend it. The first thing that you can do is watch a Sesame Street clip of Elmo as he plays a game called the Camouflage Challenge. He looks for his friend who's camouflaged all over Sesame Street. The next thing you could do is listen to the PBS Camouflage song. It's really cute. I really love that music video. Another thing you could do is watch a, or watch and listen to a fiction book about camouflage. We just read a nonfiction book, but you can listen to a fiction book called The Mixed Up Chameleon by Eric Carle. 
click the link and it'll take you to the read aloud. Other books that you can read when the library opens and you can make it there or if you can find it online is A Color of His Own by Leo Leone and What Color is Camouflage by Carolyn Otto. They're both fantastic. So after the video, boys and girls, I want you to write down some things that you learned in our book. You guys are going to fill out the L section of our KWL all on your own with a parent, sibling, or other grown-up. What did you learn about the topic? Remember, our topic was camouflage. What did you learn? Do you have any other questions? Did we answer the questions that you had at the beginning? Next, I want you to draw a picture of yourself camouflaged like one of the animals we read about or another animal that you can think of. I bet you that if you drew something and sent it to your teacher, they would love to see your work. All right, that is all I have, boys and girls. Let me stop presenting my screen. I hope you enjoyed the book. I really, really love nonfiction books. I have a seven-year-old son and he loves nonfiction. So we have a ton of books in our house. It's, it's so fun to research new topics. Don't forget that when you find a nonfiction book, all you have to do is pick it up and look at the pictures and you can figure out what that book is mostly going to be about. Don't forget to be a story detective or a book detective and look for those clues, okay? All right, boys and girls, have a great one. I love you. If nobody has told you that today they love you, I love you. We love you. And we always will.